Okay guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, it's going to be a video response to Praxis or Praxius Prepper. Uh, he runs a YouTube channel that I, I watch most of his videos, pretty good channel. And his latest video, or one of his latest videos, was titled something like, Being Ripped Post-Apocalypse Will Get You Killed, or um, yeah, Being Ripped Will Get You Killed Post-Apocalypse, or something like that very interesting title and I watched that video um, eagerly because it it um, it drew my attention the title drew my attention now in that video it was a video response to Canadian prepper um, again if you're not subscribed to either of them just pause this video go subscribe to them but um, it was a video response to Canadian prepper who did a video a short video and in that video he was working out in a gym and then he was um, cutting to him doing you could say survival chores um, like carrying buckets and like in one he's doing back rows I believe and then it, tr it translates to him in the middle of the Canadian forest with the silky katana boy a really awesome saw cutting this huge ass log and you can see the motions the same and pretty much in that in Canadian prepper video he was kind of illustrating the fact that by working out and by being um, I wouldn't say being ripped but being physically strong uh, it equates really good to uh, kind of being trained for you could say survival chores or post-apocalyptic chores he covered a couple subjects and I did take some notes before the video um, I know it's embarrassing not many notes whatsoever so this is kind of off the cuff so I might go down a couple of rabbit holes and I apologize why being strong will help you and you might notice I said strong and not ripped why did I say that well being ripped doesn't mean Jack okay being ripped does not equate to nothing okay what being ripped means is having low body fat percentage having a, a low body fat percentage, maybe under 8%, under 10%. And what that allows, a low body fat percentage, what that allows is more definition and more illustration of your various muscle groups, and that's it. Okay? Uh, you can have very, very little muscle mass and very, very developed muscles, but if you have low body fat percentage, it will show, it will illustrate to other people your various muscle groups, and that's it. Okay, you don't need a six pack, you don't need strong abs. If you have low body fat, they'll see kind of that washboard effect. The same with your arms, the same with your back, same with your chest, same with your legs, same with every single muscle group. So the first thing I want to cover is being ripped does not mean being strong. Being ripped means having low body fat. So with that being said, uh, why so with that being said, why being strong will help. Um, Pretty simple. I, I have two things. I know there's probably more, but two major things. You can do more work with less fatigue. And uh, the second one is a lower injury risk. Let's go to the first point I made, more work done with less fatigue. Uh, the best illustration I can point out is, and coming back from the gym, this analogy just hit me good. So we have our freeway right and I live at the top of the hill and my gym's at the bottom of the hill so on my way back um, it's a freeway it's maybe a three mile stretch um, a very steep incline uh, three lanes and I was in the 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 rightmost lane because I was going to exit so I you know I was going along and I I was going around the speed limit you could say and I see Next to me, a old, early 2000s, late 90s, Honda Civic rice burner, piece of, sh piece of crap car. Uh, it, you know, it sounds like it's about to just blow up. You know, I always get very paranoid when I'm driving next to them. But yeah, that like very annoying noise, right? A car being overworked, because we're talking a pretty steep hill and a shitty car. And 
that was in the lane right next to me. And then in the third lane, and I was going to try and videotape this, but the roads were icy and I don't want to like be driving one handed and videotaping all that shit. Um, and then in the opposite lane, the leftmost lane, there was a Ford F-350 uh, 6, 6. seven or a 6.4 liter, maybe a 6 liter. It was a somewhere between like a early 2000s to mid 2000s or maybe up to 2010 uh, Ford F-350 crew cab. All that stuff. A nice, a pretty nice work truck. I, I've driven them quite a bit. Um, and what was funny is they were quote unquote racing up this hill. Now, you know, the speed limit was 55 or whatever, and I was going roughly around that speed limit, and I was watching in my uh, rear view mirror, and I could see them coming up in the two lanes. And they were staying uh, pretty consistent, right? And right when they were kind of next to me, like I said, that Civic Zone, like it was about to freaking blow up, and it was probably working at 99%, um, and it was... It was probably going about 75 to 80 miles an hour. Well, this truck, right when they were kind of right around me, I'm sure, because like I said, I've driven those turbo diesels before and they have a lot of power. I'm sure the guy just barely feathered the gas just a hair more and you could just see him take off. He was probably going 100, 110 and he just left that Honda Civic in the dust. And that analogy points out that um, both the, the weak uh, POS car and the the strong powerful turbo diesel truck both were able to make it up the hill but the turbo diesel truck was able to make it up the hill a whole lot easier and with less effort it was probably running at like 20 to 30 percent it was just kind of putzing along it was probably revving around 2,000 rpm you know I you know I drive quite a bit of truck so I'm guessing up that hill it was you know between 1800 and 2200 rpm and uh I'm sure that Civic was around 7,000, 6,000, something like that. So that analogy illustrates that the truck had a lot more strength and a lot more power, so he was able to accomplish that task with a lot less energy. So that's why, in a nutshell, being strong is a good thing. So I want to cover a couple other things Praxis Prepper covered. Uh, the first thing he was talking about intimidation factor, right? And he was saying that like being built and being very uh, jacked and ripped and uh, having a lot of muscle mass uh, invokes a illusion of power and an illusion of intimidation and he was pretty much uh, what he was trying to allude to is if say there was a group of people and they saw you and you're jacked and you're ripped and you're standing there like the Austrian oak or something like that um, that they um, would not attack you that does make a little bit of sense but I'm going to strongly disagree with that and I'm going to say quite the opposite. Now, if what I like to do is I put my, my mind in <coughs> the eyes of the enemy. Now, so if there's four or five or six, whatever, a group of, a, a gang, a group of looters, whatever, and they see me and they see four or five other people, you know, a six on six, five on five, whatever, confrontation, and they say me and say um, I'm compared to the people around me. I, I have the most muscle mass. I'm the biggest. I'm the tallest. I'm the heaviest, and all that stuff. Are they going to attack? And we're all together. Who are they going to attack first? Are they going to attack the weak, uh, non-powerful, non-whatever people, the little people, the uh, the fragile, the frail people? No. They will eventually, but their first order of business will be. Uh, he screams the most power, he screams the most control, he screams the most danger to us. So let's attack him first. So being the biggest guy in the room, um, you, you draw a target on your back. Um, so like I said, if you're kind of the biggest guy and you're standing there and trying to intimidate them, and they're set on attacking you, you will be the first person that they will attack. And you might be like, whoa, I'm tall, blah, 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 blah. Well, if there's five guys, and they group together and say, listen, we're going to team up, we're going to attack that guy. Once that guy's down, the rest of the people are easy targets that we can kill, <laughs> uh, loot, rob, whatever. Um, but let's get the, the big person first. Um, again, you know, a lot of people like to think that the enemy is going to be dumb and the enemy 
uh, quite the opposite. I always assume that the enemy, whether it's looters or a gang or whatever, is just as smart, if not smarter, than me. And uh, if that's what I would do, so if I saw a group of people that I was set on attacking, I would take out the biggest person first, right? So you have to assume that the enemy would think the same thing. So that, um, so that whole intimidation factor, uh, to me, I think it's an important point, but in the opposite direction. I personally, I don't want to be the biggest person in the room. I don't want to. I don't want to scream, "Hey, I'm the most strongest, the power, the most powerful, and all that stuff." You know, I want to be gray. I want to just blend in and not and go unnoticed. And if some and say I'm in a group of people and another group is set on attacking me, they'll gloss right past me. They and then they say the guy next to him though. Now, um, he is the the biggest uh, threat type thing. So um, that whole intimidation factor, I've heard people talk about, it and I think that's total BS. Um, I don't I don't think it's that big of a factor. But if it is a factor, it's a factor the opposite way. Um, the last thing I want to cover too is um, we already covered it a little bit, but being ripped does not mean being strong. And it goes to the whole intimidation factor thing. You can be the strongest guy in the room, the, the, the most physically strongest guy in the room. Uh, maybe the most endurant, maybe the you can run the fastest mile, maybe you can squat the most, bench the, the most, do the most amount of pull-ups, whatever physical feat. Um, you can be the strongest one in the room and still not be the biggest and be the strongest. And I already covered this a little bit, but first off, being ripped does not mean being strong. Okay, we covered that. And being big and being bulky and being muscular doesn't necessarily mean that you're strong. It means that you give off an illusion. It gives. It means you give off a visual aroma of strength, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're the strongest. And what I mean by that is, you know, when I, I was 17, I would go to the gym and there's, you know, a lot of these, you know, gym rat type, you know, I'm super strong with my muscles and all that shit. And, but they were fat, they were, they were overweight. They, you know, they were bulky, they weighed a lot. And I, you know, I was around 200 pounds, 190, whatever, about 6'2". And, you know, when I walked in the gym, it's not like, oh, look, I'm the biggest guy here. And, you know, I threw off that type of message. I didn't, you know, but at the age of 17, um, my max bench was like 465. I could rep out um, bench pressing, I would rep out 315. 225 was a joke. I would warm up with 185 and 225. And that surprised a lot of people because they're like, well, how does that work? Because he doesn't look big, but yet he can bench that much weight. And it kind of goes back to the thing that you can be very physically strong, yet your frame structure, your 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 physical size can be very small. So just keep that in mind that size does not equate to strength. Should you work out and stuff like that as a prepper? I strongly believe that yes, you should work out. And um, a lot of people are like, well, you don't work out part time, you don't want to devote a lot of your life to it. Well, there's never really been circumstances where it's like, damn, you're too strong. Personally, I've never ran into that circumstance. I, you know, I've never been doing something and, you know, damn, I wish I wasn't that strong. I've never ran into that circumstance and I'm sure maybe some people have. The point I'm trying to make is there's never really a downside to being stronger. Now, you can debate what are the advantages of being stronger or healthier or having a lower weight or having higher stamina or all the above. You can debate what advantages it offers you. But what I'm saying is when it comes to disadvantages, there's not any. 